Hello and welcome to another Sheriff of Sodium video. Is there an emergency for emergency medicine? This video is the result of some conversations that started on Twitter. A couple weeks ago, I put out this tweet. I pointed out how in last year's match, maybe the biggest story was the number of emergency medicine positions that were available in the SOAP. We've never seen anything like that. And I pointed out that based on applications from this year, things aren't looking so hot this year. I think there's going to be a lot of emergency medicine positions available in the SOAP again this year. But um, although there's some interesting conversation directly below this tweet, most of the interesting conversation in response to this actually occurred in my DMs or in a couple of person-to-person -person conversations that emerged from those DMs. I got messages from potential emergency medicine applicants, current residents, practicing EM physicians, and even an emergency medicine program director. And um, upon reflection, I think that some of the points that I made in those discussions are probably ones that will be useful to a broader audience. So that's what I'm going to share today is some of the points that I made in all of those conversations. But to make sure that we're all on the same page, let's start first with some facts. Fact number one, emergency medicine was surprisingly soapy in the 2022 match. You know, historically, EM has been a pretty competitive um, residency selection process. What I'm showing you here is, a, is, a, is the number of unfilled positions in emergency medicine going back to 2008. And as you can see, in every year until last year, between 98 and 100 percent of emergency medicine positions actually filled in the match, leaving just a few scraps left over for the, uh, for the soap. But suddenly last year, there were 217 unfilled positions. Fact number two, the number of emergency medicine residency programs participating in the match has more than doubled in the past 15 years. That's what I'm showing you here. You go back to 2008, there were 133 residency programs um, in emergency medicine that offered positions in the match. You go to 2022, that number was up to 277. Now, the increase in programs is at least partially explained by uh, the movement of existing osteopathic residency programs into the single accreditation system between 2016 and 2020. You can see there's sort of one slope of this line here, and then it's steeper over that interval and maybe seems to be flattening off again. Sometimes people say, though, well, the reason there's more SOAP applicants um, last year was just because the number of programs increased, and that's maybe part of the story. But if you focus on the number of programs in isolation, you're going to ignore another more ominous trend. And that's the trend that I'm showing you here. Fact three, the number of applicants to emergency medicine residency programs declined in the 2021-2022 season. And look, this is the real issue. The number of programs and the number of positions available, those, those figures are up, sure. Notice this blue line here showing how in 2008 we had about 1,400 emergency medicine residency positions. That number increased to over 2,900 by 2022. But for most of that history, the number of applicants continued to rise along with the number of programs until all of a sudden in 2021, we had 3,700 applicants. By 2022, we had only 3,000 applicants. That's the real issue here. That's the reason that so many emergency medicine residency programs found themselves in the SOAP in 2022. And unfortunately, things look even worse for the 2023 match because fact number four is that applications are down again even further for this year. Take a look at some of these figures from the ARES preliminary application data. The yellow line shows international medical graduate applicants to emergency medicine programs, which has really been pretty stable from 2017 up till now. But take a look at the drop off in applicants from USMD and USDO schools. The uh, DOs are shown here in red, which applicants peaked in 2021 at 1,221. They're down to 905 this year. That's a 25% drop, a 10% drop just from last year. And the number of MDs that are fleeing from emergency medicine is even more significant. Again, applicants, the, app, the number of applicants peaked in 2021 at 2385, down to 1960 last year and 1460 this year. That's down 25% this year and around 40% from the 2021 peak. So in other words, for many emergency medicine programs, things are going to get worse before they get better. 
But all this begs the question, why? Why are applications down? And here's where the facts end and conjecture begins, because depending on who you're talking to, you'll find a ready list of culprits and scapegoats to blame for the downturn in emergency medicine applicants. Among the strongest contenders are workforce concerns. You know, last year, the American College of Emergency Physicians, they conducted this workforce study. I'll link to it in the show notes. Um, but basically, it projects that, that by the year 2030, not even a decade away from now, there will be a surplus of nearly 8,000 emergency medicine physicians. And the modeling for that study, it, it assumes that only 20% of ED visits are going to be staffed by a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant. If that figure ends up being higher than 20%, then you're going to have even more un unneeded EM physicians. So, I mean, who wants to go through a grueling residency training program just to struggle to find a job when you're done? Others point to burnout concerns. I mean, look, emergency medicine, it's an intense job. Um, you got to be prepared for anything from the first minute of your shift till the last. And although burnout is a concern for all physicians, I think there's at least a perception that emergency medicine is especially impacted. Some prominent EM physicians have been very open and public about sharing their own struggles with burnout and depression. And make no mistake, that is praiseworthy to, to show that vulnerability. But it may nonetheless influence students' career decisions. If you look at the pages of Medscape or other things, you'll see surveys that put EM at the top of the burnout pile. And even though the methodology is not exactly scientific, again, that may impact students' career choices. Others look at COVID-19. I mean, maybe it was too late in the game for applicants to the 2021 match to change their career plans by the time that COVID arrived. But um, applicants for the past couple of years, they probably formed their opinions about emergency medicine during the darkest days of the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, back when our EM colleagues were risking their lives, holding the line against COVID with limited PPE and overflowing ICUs and waiting rooms. And sure, some applicants may run to the fire, but it's not hard to imagine why some applicants may have found other specialties more appealing. Others say it's as simple as compensation. And it's true, there is a strong correlation between the competitiveness of a specialty and that specialty's compensation. And things for EM seem to have changed a bit in just the past five or six years. Back in 2017, there was a report that noted that EM physician salaries were up 31%, even as the hours worked dropped by 12%. And this same report describes that residency graduates were getting sign-on bonuses, sometimes as much as $50,000 to $100,000. Well, the market over the past five years has certainly cooled a bit. Emergency medicine physician compensation dropped by 27% during the pandemic, and now we've got private equity firms buying up practices and bragging about how they're going to increase profits by reducing physician salaries. Obviously, this list of possibilities is not exhaustive, and nothing that I mentioned is mutually exclusive either. It's also possible that the decline in EM applications has nothing to do with EM itself. I mean, it could be that specialties that have recently gotten hotter, like anesthesiology or radiology, maybe they're just more effectively competing for the hearts and minds of applicants um, than they had in the past. But regardless of why, the what is clear. There are unquestionably fewer EM applicants. So the next question is, if you care about emergency medicine, what, if anything, should you do about it? And look, let me make a disclaimer here. I'm not an emergency medicine physician. I don't work in an emergency medicine residency program. I try to stay out of the emergency room personally and professionally just about as much as I possibly can. But um, if you want to know what I think, and if you're talking to me in my DMs or watching this video, I'm going to presume that you do. Here's what I think. Here's my advice. First, my advice for the Nah, it's all cyclical, guys. Look, you know, even I've been around long enough to see that the popularity of certain specialties, it, it rises and falls. I mean, I graduated from medical school 15 years ago, and back then, radiation oncology had a match rate that was on par with ENT and orthopedic surgery. At the same time, psychiatry, they had the lowest mean USMLE score of any specialty, and psychiatry was considered a safe backup for any USMD. 
Now, radiation oncology positions are routinely available in the SOAP. And the match rate for psychiatry is about the lowest of any of the non-surgical specialties. So yeah, I mean, if you take the long view, some of the specialties that go cold, they do get hot again. Anesthesiology is probably the best example. 30 years ago, there was mass panic that anesthesiologists would be replaced by nurse anesthetists, and it led to plummeting interest from all residency applicants. By the late 1990s, half of anesthesiology residency programs did not fill. But by 2022, anesthesiology was hotter than ever. The match rate was just 89% for graduating MD seniors and 66% for graduating DO students. So no, the sky's not falling. EM remains a very strong and a very popular specialty. Its upper echelons are gonna be as competitive as any fields and they're likely to remain that way. And to be honest, even if a couple hundred positions go unfilled in the match, I mean, so what? We got the soap for a reason, right? Still, I reject a part of this take the long view kind of argument. It, it kind of seems a bit like climate change denialism to me. I mean, the downturn in applications from graduating USMDs that we're seeing, it is precipitous and it is unprecedented by anything that I'm aware of in all of match history. It is not inevitable that applicants are going to return. At the very least, the situation deserves a root cause analysis before you just glibly tell me that it's all just a blip. Next, my advice for emergency medicine program directors, which is this. If you don't want your program to end up in the SOAP, you need to look closely at your international medical graduate applicants. Historically, that hasn't been necessary for many EM programs. They got more than enough applicants from U.S. schools to fill the entire interview calendar. Actually, the fact that EM was the pioneer specialty in requiring standardized letters of evaluation or SLOWs, that fact is telling. It's not always easy for non-U.S. applicants to get these letters um, from an academic EM physician. And it kind of shows that instituting this process, um, you know, international medical graduates were kind of an afterthought. But as the number of U.S. applicants declines, times are changing. This graph here shows the proportion of EM positions that are filled by an applicant's educational background. And as you can see, the number of emergency medicine positions that are filled by international medical graduates typically is low, about 5 to 7 percent. So if your program wants to continue interviewing only American graduates, I mean, have at it. Don't let me stop you. But remember that the average USMD and DO senior, they interview at a ton of programs. In fact, in 2022, the average successful MD or DO applicant in emergency medicine ranked over 16 emergency medicine programs. So as that number of MD and DO applicants drifts down, you're going to be fighting over an increasingly scarce resource and leaving talent on the table. My advice for emergency medicine applicants is this. Don't freak out. Look, you got to recognize that your future happiness as a physician really has nothing to do with how competitive your match was. I'm telling you this as a pediatrician, and remember that pediatrics is the only specialty with a higher match rate than emergency medicine in 2022. Look at that, 98.4% match rate for USMD seniors, 96.6% for DO seniors. Matter of fact, you know, the number of USMD seniors who are applying in pediatrics, that, that number has been in decline for over a decade now. And yet, I can assure you that that statistic has never uh, impacted my day-to-day -day happiness one bit. And I'll tell you, my day-to-day -day happiness is significant. And I dare say that the same is going to be true for you. If you show me a pediatrician or a neurosurgeon or an emergency medicine doctor, and um, whether they love or hate their job, it's going to have absolutely nothing to do with how competitive their match was when they applied. It will matter not one bit how many applicants couldn't get in when they matched. The job is going to be what it's going to be. And if you think it's a good fit for you, how many of your classmates think it's a good fit for them really is completely irrelevant. So instead of worrying about what other applicants are doing, evaluate the specialty on its merits. And here I'm going to level with you some of the concerns about emergency medicine, like those workforce data that we discussed or the private equity encroachment. Some of that stuff would give me pause if I were an EM applicant. But in truth, no specialty is protected from disruptive change, especially when you're looking down the barrel of a 30-plus year career. So my advice is 
do what you love and do what you think you're good at and trust that if you do, you're going to be able to ride the waves even if the sea gets turbulent. My advice for elitists and gatekeepers is this. There's a surprising number of people whose primary concern with the applicant statistics is simply that emergency medicine may be transitioning from a competitive to a less competitive specialty. And if that's you, get off your high horse. Let me tell you something. It's a mathematical truth that however you define quality, half of all residents are going to be below average. And yet somehow, um, so many of these below average residents turn out to be outstanding clinicians and colleagues if they're given rigorous and thoughtful training. I've come to believe strongly that in resident selection and graduate medical education, we waste way too much time trying to screen out and cream off only the best residents. And we spend way too little time trying to provide the best education and training for all residents. So if this is you, don't smoke screen your elitism by trying to tell me how, well, this is the emergency room. You know, emergency room patients deserve only the best and brightest. Look, if you're serious about improving the quality of emergency medical care, you're going to get a lot farther by ensuring that all residents get high quality training than you will be by trying to restrict training opportunities to only the select few who can bypass your silly ARIS filters. If your program turns out graduates who are all capable and competent, small differences when they enter become not really worth fighting over. Last, my advice for advocates. So the most common type of question that I got in my DMs was from, um, from people who really care about emergency medicine. They love EM, they're current residents or practicing EM physicians, and they're asking, what should, what should people in those positions do to reverse these applicant trends? What do we do to inspire more MD and DO students to apply emergency medicine? And I appreciate the spirit, but I think it's a little bit misguided. Beyond just teaching enthusiastically, I, I wouldn't waste much time on this specifically. I, mean, I want you to think about this. If the number of US medical students applying in emergency medicine continues to drop, so what? The positions are going to fill. The only question is when. I mean, do they fill in the match or do they fill in the soap? And by whom? Do they fill by USMDs or USDOs or international medical graduates? In my opinion, this decline in applicants, it isn't a problem per se. It's a sign of bigger concerns. It's like fever or metabolic acidosis or sinus tachycardia. It's an outward manifestation of an internal problem, and it's best managed not by treating it directly, by gaming more people to choose your specialty, but by addressing the underlying cause. So don't focus on the number of applicants. Focus on the root problems. Use your energy for advocacy and seize the opportunity to broadly examine emergency medicine training and practice and focus on the things that are going to improve the specialty overall. Insist that all your residents receive high quality training. Require that any new program meets a very high standard for faculty supervision and clinical exposure. Demand safe staffing ratios and adequate capacity in emergency departments. Ensure electronic medical records are um, improving efficiency and patient care. Use your advocacy energy and political capital to leverage change and ease the pressure points that threaten EM more broadly. And if you do, I think the applicants will come. And that's all I've got. Thanks for listening.